Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update video with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 25th of June and the time has just gone 11.40 British summer time. Well, the big news uh, in today's session has been so far that European equity markets are in the red and US index futures are pointing lower too. Uh, this is all down to heightened trade tensions between the US and China. Uh, President Donald Trump has stated he intends to restrict Chinese investment in U.S. firms and in particular in U.S. technology companies. Um, what, what the, there, there is talk that this is down for this is going to be it's going to be introduced for reasons of national security, but nonetheless it does add to the heightened tensions between the two sides. <clears throat> Bearing in mind at the back end of last week on Friday, President Trump tweeted that he could be looking at imposing a 20% tariff on all cars imported from the European Union. Uh, bearing in mind the German, the German car manufacturing sector is almost like a barometer of Europe, EU manufacturing. So uh, traders are, are viewing um, the actions between, between Washington DC and Beijing as a warning sign for what they could be in for in relation to politicians in Brussels. Also on the news is we've seen a retrace in the price of oil. The oil market had a very good day on Friday after OPEC announced it plans to increase production by 1 million barrels per day. In reality, that could actually turn out to be about 600,000 or up to around 770,000 barrels per day of an, of an, of a, in, in real terms, uh, in terms of output, increase in output. Um, going into the meeting, there was talk we, we could see in real terms a million barrel increase or, or one point, over 1.5 million barrels increase. So now that in, in real terms, we're looking at somewhere between 600,000 or perhaps 770,000. It was anticipated to be better than expected or lower than expected. So we saw urge oil surge on uh, on Friday. Uh, and on the flip side of things, we've seen a, the oil market has drifted lower in today's session. Uh, taking a look at what we have in the week ahead, uh, which can be found on the, on the news and analysis section of our website. Um, scrolling down here, we can, we can find out uh, what are the corporate and economic stories. So on Tuesday, tomorrow, we have Carper Wright, a full year figures out. On Ch Thursday, we have fourth quarter figures from Nike. On Thursday and Friday, uh, over in the US, we have uh, first quarter GDP and the core PCE numbers. On Friday, we have uh, first quarter growth from the UK. And on Friday, we also have the Eurozone CPI figures out. So these are, all, these are, these are the highlights of the, both the uh, corporate and economic events of the week ahead. So taking a look now, I'll cover the markets and see how things have been playing out. Starting off with the FTSE 100. So as I pointed that out in recent videos, the FTSE 100 had an excellent run between mid-March and mid-May. Ever since then, the market has been coming up ever so slightly. So we, we have seen what could be the beginning of a, of a wider correction because we have a lower low here, a lower high and a lower low. But while we remain north of this area here, 7,550, we could look at uh, we could look at holding our ground, and we could looking at retesting 7,800. And if we go north of 7,800, we could be looking any back up towards 7,900. But if we do take out this area here, the 7,550 area, we could be looking looking at taking us back down towards 7,482. And if we go south of that, we could be looking any back down towards this red line here, the two-day moving average, which comes into play at 7,446. Take a look now at the German market, and as I mentioned, uh, the German car manufacturing sector is under pressure given that President Trump tweeted uh, it could be looking at uh, uh, slapping a levy on US car, EU car imports into the US. And given that what's going on with China at the moment, Brussels politicians are probably thinking they're next in line for the Trump treatment. So we can see here that in recent sessions, um, with the DAX, the German market has been under considerable consider a bit of pressure. It's pushed down here. It's, it's, it's today it's a level not seen since late April. If you take a look at the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, we can see that the, there's a steady increase in positive and negative momentum while the market is drifting lower. So the market's pushing lower. That's been confirmed by the steady increase in negative momentum. So the momentum is with the sellers. If we do continue to drive lower from here, we could be looking at taking at targeting the late April low. Of, uh, which comes to the play in here in around the 12,300 and this area here of 3,000 um, 12,300 12, is rough, roughly the area and if you go south of that we could be looking heading back down towards 12,000 the figure and then if you, have a, if you go south of that again 
we're accumulating heading back down towards the lows of the year at 11,692. Moves to the upside uh, could run into resistance at this red line here. The eternity moving average comes into play at 12,788. As I mentioned, we're expecting a lower start on the Dow Jones uh, when things kick off. So as you can see here, the Dow Jones had, was broadly moving higher for a number of months there. We saw a steady series of higher highs and, and, and higher lows. We have seen the market could get caught up in the trade tensions as it has been drifting lower in recent sessions. Once again, if we look at, look at the MACD indicator, we can see a steady increase in negative momentum. So as the market is drifting lower, we can see that being confirmed by the steady increase in, in negative momentum. So if you, could, if you do continue to push lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards this red line here, the trade moving average, which comes into play at 24,343. And if you move south of there, we could be looking heading back down that back down towards 24,000 and if you go south of there we could be looking at heading down towards this trend line support if you draw a low between the lows of february through april and uh, and, and also may you can you can get this this trend line you can get this trend line support here and if we do manage to drift head if we, if we do manage to drift south 24,000 we could be looking heading back down towards this 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 trend line here which we could to play roughly at 23,825 ish Moves to the upside uh, may, may run into resistance at uh, 25,000, a big psychological number, a psychologically important number. And if you go north of that, we could be looking heading back up towards uh, the, the June highs in the region of uh, 25,000, uh, in, in around the region of 25,350 uh, ish. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading back up towards 20, 25,507. And north of that, heading up towards uh, 25,821. Taking a look now at what's going on in the oil market. Like I said, we, we had a major move to the upside on Friday. We are, we are seeing some of those gains being handed back. Well, the big picture for oil has been that for essentially for about 11 or 12 months, we've seen a major up, uptick in the price of oil. And now that we finally have this OPEC meeting, where there are going to be, there's going to be an increase in production, but the production increase is widely to believe, widely to believe uh, smaller than the market dissipated, we could see the price of oil drift lower potentially. Uh, we could see a bit, of a, a bit of a further pullback. Notice how in recent weeks we're, we're, we're beginning to see what, what could be the, the start of a, of a trend lower. So we've seen a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, and now we're still kind of in the in, a, in that kind of in between period. If it do manage to drop below uh, the, this, this level here at 72 spot 38. It could take us back down towards $71 or perhaps even down as far as uh, $69. If you do manage to, to push on higher and if you do manage to retake this, this blue line here, the 50 day moving average at 76 spot 05, we could be looking heading back up towards the recent highs of just north of 77. And if you go beyond 77, we could be looking heading back up towards the late May high of 78 spot 98. That was Brent taking a look now at WTI. WTI has had a, a, a larger bounce back, uh, a, a much larger bounce back on Friday, but, uh, and has given up or only, a relative, relatively speaking, a smaller amount of ground. So while we, we hold north of this blue line here, the, the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 68 spot 19, we could look at actually retesting the 70 area or perhaps even the 71 area. And if you go north of 71, we could be look at, looking at testing the May high of 72 spot 79. Moves to the downside, the areas where traders will be keeping an L4 will be the, the late June low of 73 spot 65. S sorry, apologies, 73 spot 58, this area here. If you take out that, that will be creating a new multi-month low. It could take us back down towards the early April low of 61 spot 78. Turning our attention now to the currency markets. Uh, the euro has been in a steady downward trend versus the US dollar since April. Uh, it's been quite a, quite an impressive how much, uh, how much ground the, the US dollar has made in, in recent months. We are seeing, though, a bit of a, a trading range in this area. Um, the, to the top end, 1 spot 18.51. To the lower end, 1 spot 15.10. We're kind of almost right in the middle of the trading range at the moment. But while it remains south of 1 spot 18.51, it's likely that, that, the, that the bearish trend is going to remain intact. And if you take out the recent lows of 1 spot 15.10, one spot 15, 10 the next move of areas keep keep on out of the downside will be one spot 14. 
if we do manage to break north of one spot 1851 and now to keep an eye for will be the 120 level and finally turning our attention to the pound versus the us dollar in a similar situation here we've seen the pound lose ground versus the us dollar uh, for over two months now uh, once again we've managed to create multi-month lows uh, on thursday last week uh, in a seven month low but we have managed to come off those lows but once again, until we actually take out the, um, the early June high of one spot 3472, it's likely that this, this downward trend is going to remain in place. If you, if you, break, if you take out the, uh, the recent low of one spot 3102, it could, it could bring 130 into play. Uh, but if you do manage to take out uh, one spot 3172, we could be looking at any backup towards the trailing moving average, which comes into play at one spot 3601. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.